Everyone, hey, it's Nate here with Outside Cleaners. I'm on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where I wash the outside of buildings for my living. Um, because of the nature of the architecture where I live and the design styles and such, what this, what this basically means is that I wash bare wooden surfaces for my livelihood. Um, I've done this full-time since 2012 and part-time a little bit before that. Cleaning bare wooden surfaces is how I support my family. I do all the work with my own two hands. I clean all types of wood, but it, you know, especially where I am, that means the cedars, red, white, yellow cedar, cedar clapboard, cedar shakes, sh cedar shingles. Um, I also clean uh, a lot of hardwoods, mahogany decking, ipe, um, teak, teak furniture. The question comes up uh, regularly, and it's a great question. You know, whether it's just after I've cleaned the, the beautiful, expensive red cedar roof, or the expansive Ipe deck, the question comes up, um, Nate, now that, now that this bare exterior wood surface is clean and free of organic growth and all that, how do we keep it clean? How do we keep it looking good? And I, I don't know, to me, that's not only a great question, it's, I think it's one of the great questions in my industry, my industry being the exterior cleaning industry. How do we keep bare exterior wooden surfaces looking good? Now, I'll say right up front that um, what I'm gonna say here is based upon my experience right here where I live in Eastern Massachusetts. This is, you know, old New England, right on the coast. We do have four seasons. We do still sometimes get real winters. So, you know, we have cold, we have heat, we have a lot of moisture, a lot of moisture. Um, I point this out because w what I'm gonna suggest in this video is applicable, I think, where I live based on my experience here. But you know what, this is where I live with our climate and our types of wood. So if you're viewing this video and you live in Alaska, Oregon, Arizona, if you live in Louisiana, if you live in another part of the country, um, you might find that what I'm saying might not be applicable because of differences in the types of bare exterior wood you have or the types of climate that you have. Um, I certainly have learned at this point that there are different norms and standards um, and preferences in the exterior cleaning industry based upon where you are in the world. And those norms and standards are uh, really based in no small part upon the type of weather you have. So again, if you have, if you have something different than me, totally different materials, you're on a different map. Maybe this is applicable, maybe not. All right, that being said, um, my industry, the exterior cleaning industry, would have you think that in order to keep your, let's just say your, your white cedar shingled siding, it's the standard, standard siding here on Cape Cod, white cedar shingled siding. In order to keep that looking good, there, my industry is going to say, well, you either have to periodically reclean it, or you have to, after cleaning it, put on some sort of magic sealant. And I disagree strongly with both those options. Let's go through it step by step. I wanna explain why I disagree with those. So first of all, um, periodic and chronic recleaning. On the surface, it sounds great, right? You know, oh, I cleaned it, looks good today. You know, we go two, four, six years down the road, homeowner starts to see some green or black, or, you know, it's starting to get discolored with organic growth. So they call me and I come back and I clean it again. Well, here's, here's my problem with that, using that example. So white cedar shingled siding on Cape Cod should absolutely last at least 30 years, at least 30 years. But like any exterior wood surface, what makes white cedar so long lasting as an as a bare exterior wood surface on Cape Cod is its natural properties which protect it against the elements and especially the oils in the cedar. 
So let's think about this for a moment. Let's set the cedar aside. What if we're talking about our skin? All right. What if, um, what if I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to deeply clean my skin um, with some strong chemicals every day. Well, more likely than not, a short time is going to go by before I start drying my skin out. It's the same idea with that white cedar shingled siding. If I overclean it, and, and I think I can clean white cedar as well as anyone on this earth, but if I clean it as gently as I can, it's still inadvertently going to strip away some of those protective oils that make that cedar so long lasting. Now, if I do that once, okay, I think that's okay. I think once in a 30 plus year uh, lifespan of the siding, I think that's okay. And in my experience, that's just fine. But in my experience and what I've observed, keeping my eyes open around here for a long time is that uh, white cedar siding that gets washed two, three, four, five plus times. It, I mean, you can take not just years, but decades off that siding. And if you live in the area, drive up and down Route 28 in Harwichport, you can readily identify restaurants and some commercial buildings that somebody has washed like every year or two for many years now. And I'm telling you, these buildings, their, their siding is going to have to be replaced before the siding is 15 years old. It's, they're not going to get half the life out of that that they should because every time they clean it, no matter how gently they're cleaning it, no matter how soft they're cleaning it, they're inadvertently and unavoidably stripping away some of the protective oils that make that wood so long lasting. And not only does it, does it strip away life from the shingles, but you know, after a couple cleanings, that wood starts to look pretty rough. It looks washed out the shingles start to sort of deform, they're cupping, they're curling because they're losing those oils. Things are shrinking and shriveling. Now, uh, everything I've just said about that white cedar siding, um, I, would, I would also say about a red cedar roof, an ipe or mahogany deck, teak furniture, and on and on. So my point is, in my strong opinion, um, any type of bare exterior wooden surface um, can be overwashed. It can be, you know, in my opinion, it can be cleaned once or maybe even twice in that 30 year lifespan. But those cleanings should be the rare exception, not the not the routine norm for these reasons that I've mentioned. So I can hear some of you saying already, um, Nate, no, no, no. After you clean it, you put on some sort of magic replenishing oil to uh, replace what's been stripped out. Well, my, my answer to that is a couple of things. First of all, if I had, uh, if I, if I'd seen that work as advertised, I'd be offering it. I'd be pushing on, on all my clients. I'd be making a mint with that. Here's the thing. I'm the guy that the homeowner around here often calls to fix this mess when the painting company or the house washing company no longer calls them back. The mess being, um, instead of magically protecting the, the bare siding, the added oil has become some sort of mold farm. It's attracting organic growth or the oil that was applied last year has now completely faded away in the sun. The north shady side of the house is sort of hanging on, but there's areas that are now all blotchy and uneven. And at least one member of the household is very unhappy with the appearance of the house at that point. So again, I understand the theory of replenishing lost oils. My problem is in the real world execution of it, I'm not meeting homeowners that are happy with it. And in fact, as I sit here, I literally can't think of a single homeowner I've met ever around here that is happy with that. So do I know 
you know, what exactly is wrong with these replenishing oils? No, I don't. I know that people out in the Southwest especially love them. Maybe it's a climate thing, back to what I said earlier. And by the way, by, by stripping out those oils, I've had to use strong chemicals, which further strip out the protective oil. So, so that gets us right into the tailspin of losing the protective oils that I've, I've, you know, I'm trying to avoid in the first place. Um, I do get calls. I still get calls from these vendors who say, Hey, Nate, this is an easy markup. Just offer this, you know, replenishing oil to your, to your customers. It's easy money. I don't doubt that it's easy money. What I doubt is that it's a, a, a good thing for the homeowner in the long run. That's why I don't offer it. What about, um, what about these magic sealants? Well, the idea, again, in the lab or on paper, it sounds good. You know, you get a, a clean piece of wood and you seal it so that water can't get into it or water can't get onto the wood fibers. And without water, you get away from things like mold and rot and a lot of decay and all that stuff. Problem being, very similar to um, very similar to the replenishing oils and, and the, the, the oiling that I was just talking about, um, locally, I'm often the guy that's called to fix a house when, you know, either these painting companies or a local house washing company that sealed the house doesn't call them back because the problems just get worse and worse. Now the homeowner just wants it back to the way it was. I hear that all the time. They just want it back to the way it was. So what happens is you know, we're talking about a, a porous material, cedar's porous. Um, it's cleaned, they spray or they roll or they dab on this sealant. Uh, when the cedar gets wet or when the siding gets wet, it, it beads up, water beads up and runs right off. Well, that seems great, right? So the practicalities and the reality of it is a couple things. No, no matter who cleans that cedar, I don't care if it's that guy, I don't care if it's me, I don't care if it's Jesus Christ himself, no matter who cleans that cedar, unless they irradiate the house with a neutron bomb, you're not going to be able to absolutely positively remove every last possible spore of organic growth or mold or algae or anything like that. They're, you're trying to clean a big sponge, basically. And all we're really able to get to is the surface. So what I often see is they put this clear coating on and then the next season, there's like this strange blotchiness coming through. And you know what that is? That's mold. Mold's coming out from within that sponge that we call cedar siding. And now what we've got is a mold cocoon. How do you clean that siding now that you can see the mold coming out? You can see it through the clear sealant, but because of the sealant, you can't just clean it right away. You know, um, look, when, when paint, when, when stained siding is installed, they back prime it. They prime the back of it. They install the siding. Then they stain the front of it. They do that so that moisture doesn't come through the siding from the backside, which it otherwise will if it's not back primed. So applying a, a magic sealant to the outer face of the siding isn't necessarily gonna keep moisture from getting into that wood. And, you know, I, I can go on and on, but I think the bottom line from my shoes is that, again, I, I've seen this too often, way too often to want to encourage it or suggest it for for a, a homeowner in this type of environment. And everything I've said about the cedar is basically true for, you know, mahogany or ipe decking, except honestly, the, the, the difficulty with a hardwood over a softwood is, you know, getting something to penetrate it. Try to oil, a, you're gonna try to oil ipe? Good luck, that stuff sinks in water, it doesn't burn. It is as dense as can be. Good luck trying to get anything to 
uh, good luck trying to get anything to absorb into it or to penet penetrate the wood fibers. Bottom line is, having done this since 2012, having cleaned bare wood surfaces for 2012, I'm well aware of the easy markups that I can offer to my customers. I don't offer them. I don't offer, you know, repeated annual cleanings. I don't offer magic sealants. I don't offer oil replenishment because I don't see it working as advertised. I, I don't want my name on it. Okay. I wouldn't do it on my own house. And believe me, I've had vendors offer me the free product so I can try it on my own house. I look into it. I talk to people and I say, nope, nope. All right. So I don't recommend magic sealants. I don't recommend repeated cleanings. I don't recommend um, replenishing oils. What is my solution or suggestion for homeowners who want their bare exterior wooden surfaces to be kept clean and free of organic growth in our, in our dank uh, seaside environment? Here it is. It's a spray application. It dries clear. Okay, I think of this as the mouthwash of the exterior cleaning world. I'm not gonna clean with this, but I'm gonna keep surfaces clean with this once they've been cleaned. Alkyl dimethyl benzyl ammonium chloride. Some, some industry things call it ADBAC, A-D-B-A-C. In my experience, this chemical, uh, this synthetic chemical is the current best option for keeping bare exterior wood surfaces clean and, and free of organic growth. It's an antimicrobial. It's in a lot of soaps and, you know, disposable wipes that gyms and hospitals use and things like that. They say it is biodegradable, although not nearly as readily biodegradable as some of my other favorite chemicals, such as hydrogen peroxide. Can't beat that. Same active ingredient as wet and forget, but this stuff applies way better. Uh, when, I, when I spray wet and forget, I feel like a kid with one of those soap bubble toys, you know, blowing bubbles. And look, if you're cleaning the steps of your deck or, or trying to keep your, your steps clean, I'm sure you can pump spray wet and forget just fine. But if you're talking roofing, you're talking sidewall, you're talking big areas, it, certainly if you're, if you're a cleaning contractor, I don't use and I don't recommend wet and forget. I use this. The problem with this is you can't just hop on Amazon and uh, click on it late at night and have it here the next morning. Um, currently, as of October of 2024, you're going to have to call the sales guy. I'm going to put his name and cell phone number in the top of the description of this video. In my opinion, this, this chemical is no joke to work with. Um, I, I take extreme care to keep it off my skin to, you know, avoid breathing it in. So if I'm, if I'm spraying a cleaned surface, again, using a cleaned white cedar sidewall as an example, I got my, you know, full, full gear with rubber boots, rubber gloves. I got my respirator. I got my hat. I got my gloves. I don't want to breathe it. I don't want to get it on me. I am pre and post rinsing all the nearby vegetation and all that. I can only do it on a day that's got almost no wind, which can be a trick around here. All right, so let me let me put it this way. Again, I've I've been cleaning a long time. Um, I've got I've got a vast array of chemicals and processes and tools and methods at my disposal. I've got. Um, painting companies and cleaning chemical companies constantly sending me stuff for free. I've got all this at my disposal. What do I do on my own house? How do I keep my own cedar shingled house clean and looking good? Well, here it is, my pride and joy. So what I did on my house is what I recommend for my customer's house. Um, I, I cleaned this once years ago. I think I cleaned it eight years ago. And now I treat it annually with this. Wet and forget is not the ticket. It's this stuff right here. Uh, it applies way better. I just see better results with it. All right. So uh, speaking of my own house, look at this siding. 
uh, as I re as I make this video, it's 2024. That siding was new in 09 or maybe 10. So this siding should be halfway through its life at this point. By all rights, the north side should be turning green. The west side and south side should be turning black. But because I cleaned it once, I got it cleaned and now I keep it clean. Here's what we're looking at. North side, west side, south side. Ooh. So to be clear, I'm not getting anything for recommending this product to, to you. Um, I'm not getting a, a commission or a kickback or a hug or anything. I'm just trying to simply and honestly and thoroughly answer the question of how do I recommend to keep those bare exterior wooden surfaces clean and looking good once they've been cleaned? Hope that helped.